So we have uh, and extreme performance and range. Um, and uh, we should probably talk about uh, the you know, Model S Plaid. You know, what about that? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, anyway, we, we, we took the la latest plat out to Laguna Seca on Sunday. It got um, a minute 30, um, and uh, we think probably there's another three seconds or more to take off that time. Uh, so uh, we're confident the Model S plat will achieve the, uh, the best track time of any production vehicle ever, of any kind, two-door or otherwise. Um, and you can order it now, uh, and it's uh, <laughs> available uh, uh, basically end of next year. What does, this, what does this mean for our future products? Uh, so, uh, we, you know, we're, we're confident that long term we can design and, and manufacture a, a, a compelling twenty-five thousand dollar electric vehicle. Um, so, you, you know, this this uh, this has always been our dream from the beginning of the company. I even like wrote a blog piece about it um, because um, you know our first car was was an expensive sports car, and, and then it was, then it was like slightly less expensive sedan, and then finally it's sort of a I don't know mass market premium, but you know like the Model Three and Model Y, um, but it really it was always our goal to try to make an affordable electric car, and um, I think probably uh, w w yeah, like I said in about about three years from now uh, we're confident we can make a very com uh, uh, very compelling. $25,000 electric vehicle uh, that's also fully autonomous. And when you think about the $25,000 price point, you have to consider how much in it, how much less expensive it is to own an electric vehicle. Yeah. So yeah. actually, it, it's, it, it becomes even more affordable at that $25,000 price point. Yeah. So we have... Uh, and Let's talk a little bit about what's in a cell factory. First, there's an electrode process where the active materials are coated into films onto foils. Um, then those foil coated foils are wound in the, in the winding process we just talked about, where if you do have tabs, you have to start and stop a lot. Um, then the, the jelly roll is assembled into the can, sealed, uh, filled with electrolyte, and then sent to formation, where the cell is charged for the first time, and, and where the sort of the electrochemistry is set and the quality of the cell is verified. And we set out at every step of this process to try to take that inspiration we just shaw showed and, and think about how we make those processes fundamentally better and more scalable. And one of the most important processes is where it all begins, the wet process of the, uh, of the electrode coating. And I, just to give you all a sense of scale, I'm going to walk through what's in that wet process. You've got mixing where the, the powders are mixed with either a water or a solvent, solvents for, for the cathode. Um, that mix then goes into a large coat and dry oven where the slurry is coated onto the foil, you know, huge ovens, tens of meters long, dried, uh, and that solvent then has to be recovered. You can see the solvent recovery system. And then finally, the coated foil is compressed to the final density. And when you're looking at this, you're like, wow, that's a lot of equipment for one step, especially when you consider that little speck next to the coating oven is a person. This is serious, serious iron involved in making batteries. Wouldn't it be great if we could skip that solvent step, which is one of those dig a ditch and then fill it kind of things where you put the solvent in and then take it out and recycle it, and just go straight to dr uh, uh, dry mix to coat. And that's what the dry process really is about. And in the most basic form, you can see it here on a bench top. Literally, powder in, into film. As simple as that. I mean, it's hard, actually, uh, just to be clear. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, if, if this was easy, everyone would do it. So the, it's not like uh, dry coating electrode is, is actually 
uh, easy. It's, it, it's, it's actually very hard to do what appears to be a simple thing. Um, and and it's, it's worth noting, like, um, you know, we did acquire Maxwell as like a little over a year ago, I guess. Um, and, you know, it's, it's certainly a good company and everything, but the, the, the dry coding they had was like, it's, it's like sort of, I would call proof of concept. Uh, since the acquisition, we've, we've actually uh, revved the, the machine that does dry coding four times. So we're in re revision four post acquisition of the machine. Um, and there's still a lot of work to do. So I would not say this is like completely in the bag. It's still a lot of work to do. Um, and, you know, as you go, as you scale, go from like bench top to lab to uh, pilot to volume production, uh, there are actually major issues that you encounter at, at every level. It's not like, you know, you, you make something work on your on your bench and bingo, now you can make a bazillion of, of it. It's, Absolutely. It's insanely difficult to scale up. Um, yeah. And, but, and, and, yeah. But if you do scale it up, yeah. what, what you saw before becomes this. Yeah. So you can see the motivation. A 10 times reduction in footprint, a 10 times reduction in energy, and a massive reduction in investment. Um, but as Elon was saying, simple is hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean to be clear, I would like to not say that we, right now it's just totally working. It's 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 close to working, <laughs> but it's not even now. It at the pilot plant level, it is close to working. Well, I see, okay, I it's fair to say it probably it does work, but with not a good, not a high yield. Yeah. So we're, we're still ironing out the kinks, but we've made tens of thousands yeah. of cells, thousands of kilometers sure. of electrode. I mean, we are on the fourth generation of the equipment, so we've learned a lot along the along the way. Yeah. I mean, it is super demanding because every atom has its place if you want to deliver the energy density and the cycle life and the supercharging. Yeah. But we're, but we're, we're confident that we will get there, but it yeah. will be a lot of work along the way. There's a clear path to success, but a ton of work between here and there. Yeah. So, uh, but this is a, a really profound improvement. Again, for people that know battery uh, manufacturing, this is, a, this is gigantic. Um, We'll probably be on, on machine revision six or seven by the time we do large scale production. Um, the, the rate at which the machines are being improved is, is extremely rapid. Like literally every three or four months is a new rev. We came up with this tabless architecture that maybe you've heard about um, that, that basically removes the thermal problem from the equation and allows us to go to the absolute lowest cost form factor um, and the simplest manufacturing process. And this is what this is what we mean when we when we talk about tabless. It's kind of a beautiful thing. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what these that's what these t-shirts mean. But it's very esoteric. It's like nobody could figure it out. But yeah, um, we basically took the existing foils, laser patterned them, and enabled dozens of connections into the active material through this shingled spiral you can see, with simpler manufacturing, fewer parts, 50, 50 millimeter versus 250 millimeter electrical path length. Uh, which is how we get all the thermal benefits. Yeah, this is important to appreciate. Like basically, the the the, the distance that that electron has to travel, you know, it's it's just much less. Um, so uh, you actually have a shorter path length in a large tabless a large tabless cell than you have in the smaller cell with tabs. So this is a big deal. So even though the the cell is bigger, it actually has uh, more power. Uh, the power to weight ratio is actually better than the smaller cell with 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 tabs. This is. Uh, you know, again, like, this is quite, quite hard to do. It, so it's, uh, you know, nobody's done it before. Um, so, uh, and it really took a, a tremendous amount of effort uh, w within Tesla engineering to figure out how do we make a frigging tabless cell um, and have it actually work and, and then connect that to the top cap. And it's, uh, there's a whole bunch of things that we're, you know, keeping a little secret source here <laughs> that we're not telling everything. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, Sometimes <laughs> what's elegant and simple is still hard, and it, we, we, it took us a lot of trials, but we're, we're happy where we ended up. Yeah, I mean, everything's simple in, in recollection. You know, after you, like, uh, simple, everything, it's hard until it's discovered, and then it's simple. <laughs> um, so anyway, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of really cool things going on uh, that, that enable uh, tablets, and um, uh, it's really, you know, Due to a really great engineering team, Drew and the, and the rest of the team have done amazing work in, in achieving this uh, tabless construction. Um, and it sounds, I think it may sort of sound a bit silly to some people, but it, it, this was, this is like, if for people that really know cells, this is a massive breakthrough. For cylindricals to be able to, to get rid of the tabs dramatically simplifies winding and coating. Yeah. And has an awesome thermal and performance benefit. Yeah, um, that's, uh, just to be so, elaborate on that a bit, it's like when the cell is, is going, going through the, the, the system, the system it, 
it has to keep stopping where all the tabs are. Yes. So you can't do a you can't do continuous motion uh, uh, production uh, if you have tabs. You have to keep stopping, and and then there's a rate at which you can start and stop and accelerate again, and and it really slows down the the rate of production. And then sometimes you get the tabs wrong, um, and you also get lose a little bit of, of of active area. It's 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 really a huge pain in the ass to have tabs um, yes. from a production standpoint. Yes. Um, and so when we put it all together and go to our new 80 millimeter length, 4680, we call this uh, new cell design, we get five times the energy with six times the power and enable 16% range increase, just form factor alone. Uh, yeah, so when, 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 these, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. And just, uh, just to, to clarify, that when, we, when we see these um, plus 16% six, or whatever the, uh, the percentage range increases, these are the amounts due just to that particular innovation. Yes. So we'll list a whole bunch of innovations, and then when you add them up, you get a total uh, improvement in uh, energy density and cost. Uh, but uh, th these numbers are, are what refer to just this thing. Yeah, and I want to stress, this is not just a concept or a rendering. We are starting to ramp up manufacturing of these cells at our pilot 10 gigawatt hour production facility just around the corner. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a video of uh, some of what's going on in the plant. Um, now, I mean, to, to be clear, it will take about a year to reach the 10 gigawatt hour capacity. Hi, Elon, to your left here in the white Model Y. Ryan McCaffrey from the, from the Ride the Lightning Tesla podcast. Uh, curious about Cybertruck. It was interesting to see where you had it in on the battery technology front. I'm sort of curious what you see for it in the production front. Is its volume, you know, trucks are so popular in America. Do you see its volume equaling the three or the Y in the future? And also, is the, uh, did you, did, were you able to get Tesla is able to legally be sold in Texas as part of the Giga Texas deal. <laughs> um, well, it's hard to say what the volume exactly would be for the Cybertruck. The the orders are gigantic, so and we have like I don't know, well over half a million orders. Of, I think maybe six or six hundred thousand. It's a lot, basically. We stopped counting. Um, so I, I think there's probably room for I don't know at least like a unit volume of like. 250 to 300,000 a year, maybe more. Um, so uh, now we are designing the Cybertruck to meet the American spec because if you try to design a, a car to meet the global, the, the, the super set of all global re requirements, it basically you can't make the Cybertruck. It's impossible. Um, so uh, it it's really is designed for the American market, but this is the biggest market. Our North American market is the biggest market for pickup trucks by far, or l large pickup trucks. And then I think for uh, in, we'll probably make an international version of, of the Cybertruck that'll be kind of smaller, you know, kind of like a tight Wolverine package. Um, it'll still be cooler, but it'll be it'll be smaller because you just can't make a giant truck like that for most markets. Um, so yeah, but it's gonna be great. Uh, and I I'm, I don't know. I think probably we'll be able to sell directly in Texas. Um, we do pretty well right now, uh, but it, it is a bit weird not being able to actually conclude a transaction in Texas. But it, it's got to be like you know, a click on a server based in California. <laughs> so, um, but weirdly, we can do leasing in Texas, but not selling, but I, I, hopefully that'll get cleared up in the future. Yeah, Elon, uh, great job with everything.